the Kyrie trade request we discussed yesterday just shockingly came to fruition instantly. In my opinion, it's great to see the Nets finally move on, and it'll be thrilling to see Irving play next to potentially the next Michael Jordan in the making, Luka Doncic. Odd man out of all this is Kevin Durant, who's now had James Harden and Kyrie Irving get their trade request granted, while KD's drama with Joe Tsai back in the offseason, where he requested a trade, didn't result in anything. Nevertheless, let's talk about how we're about to witness one of the shiftiest combinations of shot creators form an all-time great duo in Dallas. Regardless of the success that Luka Doncic and Kyrie Irving ultimately achieved together, and whether or not they win a title together, watching these two gravity-drawing one-on-one sensations go to work on a nightly basis is going to be show-stopping. This sham bomb became official on Sunday, which consisted of a trade revolving around Kyrie Irving going to Dallas in exchange for Spencer Dinwiddie, Dorian Finney-Smith, and a single first-rounder to go along with a few seconds. I proposed three first-rounders that the Mavs would have to give up in my Kyrie video yesterday. Mark Cuban and Nico Harrison got him for just one. So this on paper seems to be a steal for the Mavericks, at least at first glance. And while Spencer Dinwiddie was massive for them in their run to the conference finals last year, and Dorian Finney-Smith played exceptional in his last game in Dallas Threads and was also a big role player last year, but having said that, bringing in legitimate support for a generational talent in an all-timer in the making in Luka Doncic by bringing him Uncle Freakin' Drew is something any sports fan can get hyped about, whether you're a fan in Texas or not. However, right before this trade went down, there were questions about Luka and Kyrie's personalities off the court being able to coexist, given they're seemingly very different. Is that a real concern though, and how effective will the Mavericks aforementioned shot creating prowess actually be? We'll touch on whether the playstyles of these two will result in either ball stopping or swiftly flowing offense. Stay tuned, but just 13.8% of my channel's audience is subscribed, so please help your boy out by subscribing, leave a like to help this video spread, and support this platform in the utmost of forms by following at dflowhoops on Instagram and Twitter. We all thought there was a chance Kyrie would get traded, but it's fairly insane this man was dealt the day after we were just talking about potential deals. One of those potential deals included the Dallas Mavericks, where I said Josh Green and Tim Hardaway Jr. they'd have to give up. It was great they got to hang on to those two, specifically mere 22-year-old Josh Green, who still has a ton of untapped potential as an energy guy on the perimeter. The fact that Brooklyn was still able to get back a player in Spencer Dinwiddie though for his second tenure with the team, a guy who, if you're not familiar with his game, is a tough contested shot making 6'6 six six combo guard, who is under contract through next year, that was a decent cop. Meanwhile, we know what Finney Smith can provide with his versatility as a solid modern day equipped floor spacer offensively and decent backside defender on the other end. Brooklyn can't be considered losers in this trade because of that, but nonetheless, we're rightfully all going to be obsessing about the assemblance that's about to take place right before our eyes in Dallas. We haven't seen a fully motivated Kyrie Irving in a while. This change of scenery should give him just that. Specifically in terms of his fit within the offense, Irving's natural ability to dictate the tempo with quick reads in transition, whether that's with coast-to-coast -coast attacks, bullets down the court with Jalen Hurts type passing range, or lobs in semi-transition opportunities. For a Mavs team that's historically, at least for the last few years, been incredibly and far too slow for the space and pace modern game, Kyrie's rim pressure and instinctively fast pace pushing will be one of, if not the biggest blessing he provides to this Mavs system. Last year, Dallas ranked dead last in pace of play, being the slowest team to score their points. They tried to speed that pace up this year, but they're still just 27th in that category in 22-23. Look for Kyrie to be the answer for both this team's spacing and pacing in terms of the easing of pressure off Luka when he's blitzed, and as I said, the running and gunning that he does. Kyrie's currently 13th among all 450 players in transition points per game. He's going to fit in well in that sense. In terms of what you're waiting to hear about, that being Irving's fit next to Luka Doncic, I've seen questions from fans on Twitter about whether or not Luka actually makes his teammates better. Now we're going to see that critique fully measured. Luka's going to be put to the test given he's about to get a teammate that LeBron was able to win a championship with. 
The combined ability to collapse the defense with swift dribble penetration after saucing up their matchups and isos will heavily benefit Dallas in the postseason. In said postseason for the last three years, while other teams have sent blitzes at Luka, a lot of the time opponents have picked their poison by not leaving shooters open and forcing Doncic to beat them individually. Now, however, other teams quite simply don't have that luxury of picking their poison, and over the course of a riveting back and forth seven game clash, Dallas will be night and day more difficult to game plan for and stop compared to what they've presented in the past. It'll be a damn tough task for the second Hall of Fame point guard Kyrie's going to play under this season and potentially get fired in Jason Kidd to not only manage the egos of Doncic and Irving, but to manage the spacing, not to mention flow, of the offensive system. Having not gone through a training camp and there only being 30 games left, it's a tad concerning whether or not that's enough time for two ball-dominant, high-volume guards to gain continuity before four losses eliminates you in April, May, and June. Nevertheless, here's what proves Dallas having to bail you out shot-creating sensations at their disposal is going to pay off in the long run. As you see in the description, the Mavericks now have two of the top three ISO scores in basketball, but in addition to that, Irving and Doncic complement each other when it comes to a mix of that ISO scoring and pick and roll scoring as the pick and roll ball handler, while Doncic scores the second most amount of points in the league only behind Ja Morant. Conversely, Kyrie Irving's far below him in that category. Also, similarly to how Jalen Brunson complimented Luka last year with his one-on-one -on -one scoring, Kyrie likewise benefits Luka. Those stats and narratives don't prove to you this will necessarily work out, but we should be optimistic this new Dallas squad, especially considering that they have two all-timers at their disposal. They get to keep an all-star caliber center at his best in Christian Wood, a top wing prospect in Josh Green, and several other decent role players who fit in. Just look at how a midseason trade affected my Raptors in 2019 when they brought in Marc Gasol at the deadline. Of course, this is a different level of blockbuster trade than that Gasol deal. Nevertheless, I'm really looking forward to watching this Mavs team after Nico and Cuban went all in. What are you most looking forward to with the new look Dallas Mavs? Whoever gives the best take on that question earns next video shoutout. Top 5 commenters with the most shoutouts by March 21st earn free merchandise of their choosing, then the board resets. Last video I asked if Kyrie Irving will be traded before the February 9th deadline, coincidentally. Shout out to Justin Lamas who says, in theory, I can see Kyrie going to the Lakers if they offered Anthony Davis or LeBron in return, and no Brooklyn would never take Russell Westbrook in a Kyrie Irving trade. That didn't come to fruition, but still a decent take right there. Thanks for watching. Have a good one.